Hi, it's time for another math easy solution. Uh, Tell and discuss further into differential equations and now look at example two of the logistic equation uh, for modeling population growth. And before we get to that example, I just want to recall from my last example, uh, last video example one, where I showed that, uh, where I graphically showed using this direction field, I'll get to that in a bit that the growth rate was uh, the highest or that the population in other words was increasing at the fastest rate at population equals to 500 or half the carrying capacity and this was the differential equation from that example and, uh, dp over dt equals to 0.08p times 1 minus p over a thousand where this thousand is our carrying capacity capital k and this is how the direction field looked like where k is a thousand and as you can see if you draw any solution to this let's just draw something like this you just follow the slope lines and then as you can see it increases and it levels off uh, at this carrying capacity and as you can see here graphically uh, notice how the slopes all start increasing increasing and then start decreasing but it looks like around this 500 mark it's the highest increase. So th this means that the growth rate here is increasing the fastest at about here. But that's just graphically looking at it. And in this example, we'll, we will actually prove that is. So basically, uh, this example states, show that if that the uh, population satisfies a, the logistic equation, then the second derivative of population equals to k, uh, k squared p. Again, this k is the... Uh, this is the yeah the proportionality constant, and this is not to be mistaken with this capital K, which is the carrying capacity. So k squared times p times one minus p over capital K times one minus two p over capital K, and then part B says deduce that a population grows fastest when it reaches half its carrying capacity. So this half mark here. So let's go and solve A. So before we solve A, well, we recall that the uh, logistic equation is just equal to dp over dt equals to the proportionality constant k, p1 minus p over capital K, carrying capacity. So now if we were to take the derivative, we just take the derivative to get the second derivative of p, so we get d, d squared over p, I mean d squared p dt squared, this is just, just the way of writing the second deri derivative this equals 2, now by the chain rule I mean the, the product rule, we're going to do the derivative of this kp, which is just, well, k is just a constant, so p prime, p prime is just dp over dt so I'll just write this, this is the same thing as writing p prime and then uh, then we just multiplied by this and then we have to take the derivative of the brackets now plus now we just put this kp by product rule and then take the derivative of this which is well derivative of one is zero derivative of negative p over k is just well p prime and then well, k is a constant so this is going to be equal to negative p prime over capital k like that and now we could simplify this further by factoring out the like terms, in this case kp prime, kp prime. So what we do, take that out, so we have kp prime, and then we have now just a giant bracket like this. Also, let's put a regular bracket. So what we have is 1 minus, and now we have this p over capital K, and then there's a negative there, so put negative and then this is p over k, so we took this one and this one out so all that's left is a negative p over k, so negative p over k like that now these are the same, we could just combine those two as well as placing this uh, this k p prime that's equal to this one right here, so, k, so p prime is just equal to all this yeah that's just our logistic equation, so we get k and then we have k p one minus p over k, so there's 2k, so put the k squared, p, 1 minus p over k, capital K, and then there's another bracket, This we could uh, add these up, will be negative 2p, these are the same, that's just two of them. So we have 1 minus 2p 
over capital K. So this means that our second derivative is equal to uh, this function like that. I'll just, and this is exactly what we were asked to show. And let's look at it. And there is exactly the same thing, k squared p, etc. And there's that too. So th there is our answer. And we've shown that it's that it's um, correct. It's the same as what we were asked for. Yes. Yeah, so now let's look at yeah part b. And it says deduce that a population grows fastest when it reaches half its carrying capacity. So in solving this, uh, basically we know that well population p grows fastest when the growth rate is the highest. It grows fastest when growth rate or p prime is largest. p prime is largest, which is just the growth rate. So in solving this, well, this is just a local uh, min-max problem. And again, recall from my earlier video the, on, on the first derivative test, that is how we solve for local minimum or maximum. So first derivative test. So if we recall from it, put the link in the description below. And basically the first derivative test basically states f of c is a, a local max. So it's a local maximum if, if f prime of x changes or the derivative of it changes from uh, positive to negative at x equals to c, which is that critical point. In other words, uh, and also at the, this also means that f prime of c is equal to zero. So the it, it so basically looks like this. So the, you have a slope like that, which is at uh, the zero slope, and this is at c. And basically, the derivative is yeah, it's positive here. And then it turns. Then it turns to negative slope. So basically, you have a positive slope all the way to a negative. This means this is a maximum or local max. Local max. Yeah. But in our case, what we want is a maximum uh, growth rate. So the p prime. So I'll write that in our case. In our case, we let well f of x equals two p prime of t, and I'll put this in bracket, i.e. want p prime maximum. So that's what we want. We don't want uh, the highest population. We just want the fastest growth rate. So basically we're doing, a, we're moving everything a derivative higher, and then in this case the derivative f of x is just equal to the second derivative of uh, population. Uh, yeah, population as a function of t. So so thus, first thing we want to do now is, well, we want to find uh, when f prime of c is equal to zero. So thus, in our case, we first, well, we set uh, at p prime, or I'll just write this f prime. And in this case, there's no actually t variable in the logistic equation, because as expl explained in my last video, it's autonomous, meaning it does not depend on t, it just depends on the population. Because as you can see, there's no t here. I'll just leave those out. So the f prime equals to, well, p double prime, because that's what we're letting it equal to, and equals to zero. So we set this to equal to zero and then solve for p. So what we have is p double prime is equal to zero, which equals to k squared p one minus capital P capital K over one minus uh, two p. Okay, like that. And as you can see, the zeros are basically here when p equals to zero, when this is equal to zero. In other words, one over one minus, I mean one minus p over k equals zero. Rearrange this, move this over to this side, multiply by k, that's just, or just p is equal to k, capital K, like that. Or in this case here, if this is equal to zero, one minus 2p over k equals to 0. Move this again. Only difference is there is a 2. So if p is equal to k over 2, this all cancels equals to 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. So we get p equals to k over 2. 
Yeah, so thus, if we put this all together, uh, oops, uh, thus, yeah, I just fixed that up. So thus, uh, p double prime is equal to zero uh, at, or I'll just, I'll just write when, p equals to zero uh, k, capital carrying capacity, or actually k over two, or capital K like that. So, we'll just highlight this. And now when we uh, look at the, basically the direction field, as you can see, it's all of these slopes are uh, leveling off like this. And in fact, if you were to go like this, negative infinity would go flat line, so it's clearly not the highest. And also, yeah, the, the formula, the formula dp over dt, uh, if you, whatever starting point is less than uh, k equals a thousand, you're never going to reach uh, a thousand, uh, I mean the k value, and you're never going to reach zero here, unless you go uh, negative in time, that goes to infinity. So basically, yeah, so basically the only thing that makes sense in this case is where um, population is not equal to zero or k, because those are just our equilibrium solutions, which are just flat line like that and also flat line across like this, which is clearly not changing. So we will ignore those as the critical points. So uh, what we're gonna do is, well, P, yeah, P is less than, uh, less than cap uh, carrying capacity and greater than zero. So we'll just take this case, and also even if you were to include those, uh, those just clearly aren't, uh, the, aren't gonna be the maximum yeah, the maximum uh, growth rate. Those are clearly flat line. So we'll only consider this. So I'll just write consider only this. So in other words, P is in between. P is equal to K over 2. So we could just look at it and say, well, that's an inflection point. And as you can see, it's increasing here. And then it's decreasing uh, above it. Well, you can see visually that's the proof that it's equal to it exactly. So that's just a visual proof, but if you want to be more concrete, yeah, if you want to be more concrete and look at the actual cases, so when k, I mean when p is less than k over 2 but greater than 0, so I'll just write at, um, at p is less than k over 2 greater than 0, for example, p is equal to, let's just pick a point, um, I'll just write ie, p is equal to, k over 4, so just divide that by 2 again. So when we have this, then our p prime is equal to k p, which is k over 4, just to show you that it's going to be positive. That's capital K again, 1 minus, and again I'm just plugging in this formula, p over k, this is going to be capital K over capital K, there's a 4, like that minus, I mean, multiply 1 minus 2k over 4, because there's a 2 before there, and capital K. So then this equals to k, capital K over 4. One, these just cancel, so 1 minus 1 over 4, and this is 1 minus, this cancels, that's just 1 over 2. So notice this 1 minus, so this is all positive, uh, yeah, so these are all positive constant, greater than 0. This part here, 1 minus a quarter, that's just 0.75. This is greater than 0. 1 minus a half, that's just half. This is greater than 0. So in other words, P double prime is greater than 0, i.e. it's positive. So we have that case for us set up. And now when we look at uh, when uh, P is greater than K over 2, so at P is greater than K over 2 but less than K, so what we have here is, for example, IE, just pick any point, because those are critical points, so these ones can't be zero, it's gonna be always in its continuous function. So all of these values are gonna be um, positive or negative, depending on what we find, which again should be negative. So P, for example, is equal to, let's just pick uh, three quarters of K. So it's greater than it, less than uh, capital K, like that. So we get P prime is equal to, K and then P is now 3 over 4 uh, capital K 1 minus 3 over 4 and then this is K over K like that 1 minus now 2 times 3 over 4 K over K 
Okay, like that. So what we have now is this K, 3 over 4, capital K, 1 minus 3 over 4. Then this one here, this is just 1, this is just 2. So that's just 3 over 2. So 1 minus and the k's is cancelled. 3 over 2. So this means again this is greater than 0. This part here, 1 minus 3 quarters, that's going to be a quarter. It's greater than 0. This part here, 1 minus 3 over 2, that's going to be negative 1 over 2 because this is greater than 1. So this means this is less than 0. So we have a positive, positive times by a negative. So this is positive positive, negative, and then you know uh, odd, num odd numbers of negative, that just becomes all negative. So this means P prime is less than zero, in other words, it's negative. So, yeah, so what we'll write down is thus P double prime goes from, goes from uh, positive to negative at x, I mean at not x, at p is equal to k over 2, thus this means that the uh, absolute growth, I mean, I mean this means that the growth rate p prime, so one power, I mean one derivative of, uh, above it, is going to be equal to, well, is a maximum, is a max. So this means that this is a max at p is, uh, I'll just write at, yeah, at at the population is equal to k over 2. I'll just write this. Yeah, so basically this is a, a maximum, and again in bracket just in case it's just worded badly, uh, at, at p is equal to k over 2. So at the half the carrying capacity. So we've just shown that that's a maximum. And in, in uh, I'll ba go backwards, so in the case of example 1, in my earlier video, which was, so example, 1, capital K, so I'll write P prime max, so the maximum growth rate equals to uh, 1,000, where that is the carrying capacity, divided by, so I'll just write K is equal to 1,000, divided by 2, that's just 500, so we've just proven that that's actually, in fact, the fastest growth rate. Anyways, that's all for today. I hope you learned from this pretty interesting video on determining uh, basically when is the fastest growth rate of a population. So in general, especially by the logistic equation, a population grows fastest when it's at half of its carrying capacity. Again, the carrying capacity is the uh, maximum long run uh, population based on res limited resources, etc. Anyways, that's all for today. If you learn and like always, uh, you can download these exact notes in the link below. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for another math easy solution.